it bothers me that I, I can't reach everybody because I try. I try so hard. I pray to try to reach more of you because I know what it feels like. I was there. I know what it feels like when you know you can do it, but it just seems like it's just outside your reach. Your fingertips are just almost touching it. You can see it. You can almost grab it. You just got to hold on a little bit more time. Keep doing what you're doing and it'll happen. Any other time when you're trading your five handles, getting out when you're hitting it and you're content with it, there isn't there isn't this invisible barrier out there. But then when you start wanting to do more, where you know if you could be consistent with this just a few times a month, wow, what would that do for your trading? I mean, that would really set you apart. Like you'd be top tier. You'd be in this upper echelon of trading. And everybody would look up to you and you'd feel good about yourself. And you would feel like this is really respectable results because you probably aren't really thinking that your five handles consistently every single day is respectable when it is, it absolutely is. So it's a balancing act that has to be maintained in your growth. In the beginning, you're scared shitless. You don't know what you're doing. You're afraid to take a trade. You're afraid to lose. You don't want to be wrong. So you're worrying about all the wrong things in the beginning. But once you work out all that stuff by experience and conditioning yourself with back testing and doing demo trading, and you work your way into a very low threshold of real monetary risk when you decide you decide to get into live fund trading, you start with a very small amount of leverage. And the graduation from that is going to be slow, not fast, slow. And the reason why it must be slow is because you don't know what it feels like to do it. When you start building up these larger positions, whether it be a funded account challenge or whether it be now you're funded with a company or you're trading with real money, those things are going to be heavyweight factors on your psyche because you're going to be constantly worrying about, did I do this right? I'm, you're going to know that you did it too soon. Guaranteed it's going to happen. You're going to feel that. You're going to feel it. And it's going to cloud your mind. You won't even be able to know when the market's telling you, I'm not going to do that. But you want it to be so badly delivered into your hands. You won't, you won't see it. You will not see it. And you'll hold on to it too long. And the worst case scenario, which is what you're trying to avoid, will actually happen. It will come back and roll against you. And that nice, big, handsome profit you had that was unrealized and you knew you should have fucking got out. At least with a partial, you didn't do it. So now what are you doing? You're kicking yourself and ass about that. You're not ready. You're not ready. It doesn't mean you're never going to get there. It just means that you haven't desensitized yourself. You work up into it slowly. Now, partials, and I'll say this in closing. Partials are a huge, huge benefit to number one, developing students because it teaches proper money management and proper trade management. And it helps you grow as a trader. It helps you understand risk. It helps you navigate order flow. But there is no, and I'm telling you openly, there is no recipe that's going to be appropriate for everyone. That's the part that you bring into it. That's your personality. If you're trading, if you're pushing a button, the result should be you're making money. That's it. Not that I impress the people that watch me. Fuck everybody that watches me. Seriously, I don't give a fuck if you like me, okay? If I'm pushing a button and I'm taking on risk, the end of that trade, I better fucking make money. I don't care if you like my post. I don't care if you like my, my management of the trade. I don't give a shit because whether you like what I did or whether you didn't like it, if I didn't do something I didn't feel I should have done or didn't do something I should have done, I'm beating my ass up mentally over that. You could never troll me. Any of you could never troll me as hard as I do myself if I know I did something incorrectly. Cheerlead yourself. Say, you know what? I fucking did this shit today this way and it paid out. I'm fucking hammering it. That's right. That's exactly right. And people think that's arrogant. Fuck them. Fuck these people that talk that shit because they are not making money. So they're fucking miserable. They're miserable. 
but you're letting those types of people creep in and you're trying to arm wrestle that shit oh i'm gonna show the the brokies the haters the fucking ict retards that's what everybody fucking says about everything and that kind of stuff is not necessary you're increasing the level of difficulty for you to focus on what it is you're really doing this for which is make money i've watched both of you literally get into fabulous fucking trades fabulous and then later on that wasn't enough you weren't content with it you went and did more or you had open profits you had it right there and you both have said uh, I just want to get a little bit more. As soon as you fucking say that, as soon as you feel that fucking impulse, I'm telling you, this is what I did to fix me. That King Kong moment. That's Larry Williams said that, you know, if you ever get this impulse when you're in a trade and you whip out the calculator and you're like, yeah, I'm going to figure out how many, if I do this, if I hold on to it this much more and if I hold on to this and, and, and I don't take much off of the position, I hold on to everything, I'm going to be able to make this much money. As soon as you start changing your mind about what you think it's likely to do or how far it's going to go beyond what you thought. And I don't know if you realize it or not, but as soon as you say it out your mouth, uh, I don't know if I should, that's it. Close the fucking trade. You are managing your money. You're managing the risk. You're managing your trade. And guess what you're also doing? You're managing the expectation of your audience properly. That means you are seeing something, your audience is watching you, and then now what are you doing? You're taking the action on saying, okay, I am no longer able to focus on this. It doesn't mean you suck as a trader. It doesn't mean that your concepts blow. It just means that you, as the operator, working in that market environment, you now have to pull the plug on the trade. And guess what you're doing? You're pulling the fucking trade at the height of the profitability while you're in the trade. If you just focus on what the fuck you're doing and when you get these little vibrations that tell you you know what's probably turning close it i've been doing it longer and i would not look at that as weakness but you probably think it's weakness oh i got other trade i bailed who the fuck is gonna sit around and say uh you're you're in thousands of dollars in profit and you collapsed it at the height of the trade right then and there it went further but that's a failure nobody would say that there ain't nobody out here that has common sense is going to look at someone in a position start to finish and they have thousands of dollars in equity and they close the trade no one is ever going to say that's a fuck up no one's ever going to say that's a failure no one is ever going to say you did that wrong and if they did they're full of shit but because you're trying to make these monumental olympic sized feats the real sole reason what you're doing it for you've made this something other than trading you've made it a an action movie you've made it a i don't know you've lost the plot and so many of my students and everybody else out there that teaches i'm sure you have students too that have done this shit. they lose the plot you're in this to make money you grow from a starting point that's rather modest and you graduate over time adding a little bit more and a little bit more. And you may discover that you won't become a hundred handle trader, but you can beat the fucking socks off of 30 and 40 handle runs. And you can find them all week long, up, down, sideways, everywhere. But a hundred handle run might not be your thing. Right when you feel that uncomfortable point at the height of your trade, that's when you're doing it. You know subconsciously you should be closing that trade. You know it. But what you're really wrestling with is not because you're afraid that it's going to go and run in your favor. You're afraid if it does do that, that the audience is going to say, you fucked up, you didn't get that big run. That's really what's going on. That's what's going on. And you're not wanting to close the trade at the height of the trade's profitability when you're feeling that uncomfortable threshold because you haven't been there enough times yet. You're not desensitized. This is all new, new territory for you. And it's awesome watching it. It's fucking amazing watching it. I love it. I wish more of you would do it. I would, I would watch the shit. I'm telling you, I would. But when you feel that discomfort, that's growing pains. That's you doing that last repetition to failure. Stop. Don't go anymore. You're not going to get any more muscle growth. 
stop right there. Then watch and see what happens. Does it run to your objective where you thought it was going to go? Or does it turn back on you? And then measure that with your journal. Just say, hey, this is what I did that day. This is how much I got. Out. This is exactly the moment where I felt uncomfortable. I closed it here. And then record what you took away from that as a positive reinforcement. And then each time you do that, just like weight training, you'll be able to add another two pound plate, five pound plate, 10 pound plate, one more repetition, one more set, and you'll go beyond and grow.